So yeah, I was thinking about, I was just reflecting there and I was just like, oh wow, what, what to say? And um, I just went back to the beginning, the real beginning when I was a child. And I was really, yeah, I remember being really unhappy and spending like lots and lots of time on my own. I was an only child, just with my dog, feeling really, really unhappy. And, um, and it got to, I got to being around maybe 18, 19, and I thought, now I'm an adult, I can start to have fun. Um, and, and trying to find the fun, trying to find the fun in um, partying, trying to find the fun in traveling. I went, I went everywhere, you know me, I traveled there and I'd get there and there, it wasn't very fun. <laughs> and I'd see I, all the wonders of the world. I went there and there was just, there was just no, there was no relief there. You'd be there and it's just like, I'm, I'm looking at Machu Picchu and I'm totally miserable. <laughs> uh, I traveled everywhere looking for this relief, looking for this happiness. So then I started to see, okay, it's not in the wonders of the world. It's gotta be in really good parties. Uh, it's gotta be in really, really, really good parties. So I went to all the really good parties and I met all the really cool people. And um, yeah, I had some really good drugs and um, alcohol too. And um, there, was, there was no relief there at all. There was no happiness there, one bit. And um, I was like, okay, so it's not in traveling, it's not in partying. Maybe it's in parties all over the world. So <laughs> I went to Burning Man, I went to Brazil Carnival. I, you know, I really did parties all over the world. There was nothing there either. And after every single place or visit or thing that I did, there'd be such a massive come down, quite literally. Um, and these, all these thoughts would come up and I'd be so, so sad. And I'd feel suicidal thoughts a lot. And so I'd go somewhere else and I'd try and do something else. And then I thought maybe it's in success. Maybe it's in success and maybe it's in accumulating money. So I started really working and I started getting a lot of success and I started accumulating money. And there was no relief there either at all. There was nothing. And I got a boyfriend and um, we lived together. And I was really unhappy. <laughs> so I had this success, I had this money, I was going partying, I had the boyfriend, I had the whole thing, I had the nice car. Um, there was nothing in any of it. It was actually really, really sad. And I was really suicidal. And I was plagued with this undermutter of my mind that was absolute relentless. And so um, I remember seeing a really beautiful friend of mine and she was really chilled out and I thought okay what's she doing I'll go and check out what she's doing and I came to a meeting in Bristol um, years and years ago and I I remember feeling really annoyed um, but I can see now the annoyance was that I felt so out of place there everyone was happy everyone was shining everyone was really nice and I, like, I felt, oh my God, I'm, I'm nothing like these people. I'm so, I'm so plagued with all this shit inside that, you know, I can't even bear to hang out with these people. I can see now that it was actually about me feeling like, I, I don't fit in here with these beautiful people, these nice, beautiful, happy people. This is, you know, I'm, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough to be there with these people. And so I, I avoided, I kept, even though I had beautiful friends that kept coming back, um, I avoided it. And I'd come back maybe every six months, every year, when I was really down and I was really, really suicidal, I'd come back again and I'd see something beautiful here in this and what's going on. But I just, I couldn't, I couldn't see my own beauty. I couldn't see that I was just like them, that I was perfect too. And so I kept on this partying, kept on this working. I was on this hamster wheel of just going on and on and on, trying to avoid my thoughts, doing everything I could to avoid my thoughts, working relentlessly, partying relentlessly. I'd have three or four people lined up every night to go and see. You know, it didn't stop. And on the Sunday, obviously, I would just be so sad and watch TV because I couldn't, I couldn't listen to my own mind. I couldn't 
even bear to be with my own self. So it got to the point where I started to have real problems with my ear. And I was just like, what's going on? And I went to the doctor and he said that I had a tumour in my ear. And it was then that it was like, oh my God, this, you know, this, it was quite big and they needed to remove it pretty quickly. And I thought this might actually be it. You know, this might be it. And what have I done? You know, just run away my whole life, run away from my, my own thoughts, run away from my experience, my own happiness. And so I had the operation and thankfully it was successful. And I turned to my beautiful friend and I said, what do I do now? Because I'd, I'd, I'd moved out of my house, I'd, I'd closed my life down. I'd finished the relationship, I'd got out of my job. I was literally ready to, you know, head on up to heaven, I guess. But, um, <laughs> but she, she turned to me and she said, well, you could always come to India. And I was like, I'm not doing anything else, you know, why not go to India, sit on a beach, have a pina colada, uh, maybe I'll find a good party, let's go. And uh, so, so I, I came here, I came to this incredible centre, which you're all very fortunate to be sat in right now. Um, and I did an intro, I was just like, fuck it, I'm just going to do an introduction, why not, you know, I'm here now. And I didn't get a lot of it, but I felt relief. For the first time in my whole life, I actually felt relief. And then by sheer chance, there was a empowerments coming up straight after. And I was like, bring it on, let's do the empowerments, you know. And I did it and it was the best thing I've ever done in my whole life. You know, forget, forget Cumba Mela, forget Brazil Carnival, <laughs> forget Machu Picchu. It was the best thing I've ever done in my life, hands down. And there was immediate relief. There was immediate, I mean, euphoria, to be honest, because it was there that I discovered, obviously the chaining, but short moments. <laughs> the biggest, bestest kept secret in the whole world. Um, if, you haven't, if you haven't been taking them, take them. They're like, <laughs> they're the best thing ever. Um, and yeah, I just saw, oh my God, I don't have to be scared of my thoughts. I don't have to run away from my thoughts. I don't have to, I don't have to run anymore. I can be, I can be me. And me actually isn't that bad to be, <laughs> you know, newsflash. So, <laughs> so yeah, um, and then of course I went to Kumbamela, but that's another story. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what I saw from there, and that was three months, three years ago, and what I saw from there was just this ever expanding, ever opening love for myself, love for everyone else love for this beautiful world we're so we're so lucky to be part of and for this training just eternal gratitude for Candice who's just devoted her life to I never thought I'd say that but yeah you know she's devoted her life um to the to us and to us recognizing our own beauty and perfection she's a beautiful incredible lady and she has put loads and loads of talks that are free on the website <laughs> Um, and she's empowered so many beautiful trainers to support us for our whole lives. If you want a trainer, you can have one that can support you always. And that's, I mean, that isn't anywhere. I know that to be true. It's nowhere else. So if you haven't done an intro and you, and you are here right now today, there's a one day intro. Give yourself the best <laughs> gift you could ever give yourself. Um, it's the best gift I ever gave myself.